I started my field research in ethnobotany as an undergraduate student here at the University of Victoria. Um, I was doing an honors degree and we'd had a speaker in our uh, anthropology class, Philip Paul, who uh, talked about the local First Nations here. He was the chief of the Tsartlet Band. And when I sort of decided that I wanted to do ethnobotany research, I phoned him up and asked if he could put me in touch with someone in his community who might teach me about plants. And he uh, put me in touch with his father, Chris Paul, who I would say is my very first teacher in ethnobotany. And so I went out to visit Chris once a week um, for a long time, for quite a few months, and started using the same methods that I still use today. And that is really just talking to him about the plants. Sometimes I'd collect plants. Sometimes we'd go out and walk around his yard or the area around Mount Newton where he lived and just look at the plants as they grew and talk about them and he would tell me their names and stories about them and uh, I worked with a tape recorder we recorded those names and the information and started just kind of building up my own knowledge and understanding about them from uh, from what Chris taught me and that's essentially what ethnobotany is that that is the the primary basic field research that uh, you need to undertake and then following on from that there are any number of directions that you can take in doing ethnobotanical research from phytochemical analysis uh, from nutrient analysis of traditional foods from uh, uh, more looking at um, the knowledge of conservation that indigenous people have um, to the classification systems that people have for the plants and animals and the places that, where they live. Um, th so there are many different directions that, that that work can take you in. The most valued medicinal plant for British Columbia First Peoples, I would say it's probably Devil's Club. Devil's Club is Oplopat. Oplopanix horridus. It's in the ginseng family and it's a shrub uh, that has maple, large maple like leaves and is very prickly. And the part of the plant that's most used for medicine is the inner bark of the stems and to some extent of the roots. And um, the reason why I'd say it, it's the most important is that wherever Devil's Club grows in British Columbia, and it's found both on the coast and in parts of the interior, people have a name for it and they have uses for it uh, medicinally and also spiritually. It's a very spiritual plant. There are many stories about it. Um, it's considered to have very strong powers for protection um, if you use it with respect and people are always careful to conserve it when they harvest it. But it's used for many different medicinal purposes. Um, most recently, or most widely maybe, to treat diabetes. And um, it's also used for arthritis and rheumatism and for colds as an eye medicine. Um, and stomach, for stomach and digestive tract problems.